الله الرحمن الرحيم إن المنافقين يخادعون الله وهو خادعهم وإذا قاموا إلى الصلاة قاموا كسالة يرؤون الناس ولا يذكرون الله إلا قليلا Behold the, hip- the hypocrites seek to deceive God The wife is he who causes them to be deceived by themselves And when they rise to pray they, ri- they rise reluctantly Only to be seen and praised by men Remembering God but seldom Next translation The, hip- the hypocrites try to deceive God But it is he who cause them to be deceived. They rise to pray, they rise reluctantly, only to be seen and praised by my seldom remembering God. Yeah, so, so uh, both translators were concerned to translate to Hawa and he is the one who deceiving them, say so deceived by themselves. That's just uh, an attempt to, uh, but it's, it's nothing to say Allah is deceiving them because he's deceiving them as a response to their deception, meaning they, um, they may plot and Allah plots against them. So if they started with the deception, it's completely perfect and legitimate for Allah to, and rational to counter that with deceiving his side, putting them, putting them genuinely putting a trap for them. Like for example, if they, when they, when they plotted to, 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 uh, to, uh, to uh, apprehend Isa and kill him and possibly crucify him, they plotted. And Allah said clearly, he plotted also. His plot was that there was a the transfiguration in which almost certainly the, the traitor took the shape of Isa and Isa took the table of the traitor and they just took the traitor who was dumbstruck and then was talking nothing until the, until he just screamed on the cross course. That's most like a Judas. And this is a complete deception for those. They thought they succeeded. They thought they got the man, they look him, but they got nothing. They just got the one who guided them there, that race, or got, got punished. And he recognized that, that he was not defending himself. Although the priest said, man, are you not defending yourself? He remained silent. What he said, I am not Isa. Imagine. <laughs> what, so at, at the end of the cross, he screamed that loud scream because and they said, why, my God, why did you forsake me? Why did we allow to fall in this sin? That's, that's the meaning of it. If you read that, you see clearly that the one screaming that cross is not Isa. Cannot be possibly Isa. And even narrated even how, how he screamed in, in Aramaic even. That's the one, I think the only one place in, in, in the New Testament where Aramaic is used. And even the inscription on top of the cross is the one only place where something is narrated originally in, in Latin. Jesus Nazarorum Rex Eudorum. Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews, mocking him. <laughs> mocking nobody, mocking themselves. This is a genuine plot. In response, they a plot. So it is, it is but, uh, that, uh, but the translator was afraid that Allah be, would be accused of being a deceiver or something. No, it's, 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 it's perfectly permissible to deceive uh, as a counteraction. You never start with a deception, never start with, uh, with, uh, uh, with, uh, with something like that. Definitely not. This, this, uh, this, that's the reason he started all creation on fitrah. I created all my servants, hunafa and pure faith and pure heartedness on, 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 uh, on uh, predestined for Iman and, and Tawheed. So they have an absolute head start. It is done later on. Their parents, the, the, the devils, the devils, maybe human devils, satanic devils, whatever entities came and took away from their religion and uh, advised them to prohibit what they have permitted. And they made everything halal from a creation. Nobody can tell you anything is haram unless I tell you. But the shayateen and the society tell you, oh, this is haram, this is not good, this is it. That's not true. All of it. Well, everything I gave to my, my, my servants is halal. What did the shaytan will come and tell you this is haram? Unless you have a messenger who tell you this, they sent you this is haram. That's, the reason, that's one of the reasons for so the basic ruling of the world. So everything is permissibility, not prohibition. This is a satanic inspiration to think that Allah is prohibiting everything you have to ask and evidence for that. Yeah, so that's just from the Allah side, everything starts with an absolute head start and positive and gifts. But if they come and try to deceive him, ah, then we will see who can deceive and mock and, 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 and plot against them. So, so, this, so there's no need to be concerned about translating it. The biggest are trying to deceive or the you th- trying to deceive Allah because the word you had, meaning trying to, that's interaction. You howl, he's trying to deceive Allah. 
and actually he is the one who is deceiving them. Where the Qamu ila salati Qamu kusara. And here we stand for prayer, they came lazy and just by force, yura'un and nas, just to show off that they are praying. They are really interested in prayer, but they have to. Otherwise, they will appear publicly that they, they are not, not believing or they are not really there. And even that, they barely remember Allah or, or, or study anything in the deen of Allah. Because dhikr can be both meaning by the way. Allah illa qalila. They don't remember Allah in, 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 in supplication and so on, but also they don't remember Allah in studying. Because dhikr is also meaning studying. And the Quran is dhikr. It is, it's not only you recite it for, for remembering Allah just as a, as a remember us as a form of supplication and prayer. You, you recite it as a form of study to see what, what Allah wants, what he, what he instructs, what he's teaching. Or both. They are failed on both two grounds. مُذَبْذَبِينَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ لَا إِلَهَا أُولَاءِ وَلَا إِلَهَا وَإِلَهَا وَمَيُضُلِ اللَّهُ فَلَنْ تَجْرَ لَهُ سَبِيلًا Wavery between this and that, true neither to these nor those, but for him whom God lets, lets go astray, thou canst never find any way. Next translation. Wavering between this and that, belonging neither to one side nor the other. If God lets someone stray, prophet, you will never find a way for him. Yeah, so that's, that's clear. That now they, in that translation, when God lets someone go astray or something like that, all they say, they say that if whom Allah misguides, you will not find any way. But we have discussed that in the issue of God, that attributing action to Allah is in the Quran basically really direct action. Except for Bukhada, it is a direct action. Because in the case of Isa, for example, it was a direct action from Allah. A miraculous direct action, changing the fashion. So they, 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 they took their friend, the traitor, and destroyed him. And the one they wanted to destroy escaped, even untouched, completely untouched, in complete honor, to be later lifted to the heaven. So this is direct action from Allah Taala in the most clear form. So they should not have his said to say he deceived them. But here it's true. I usually attribute the action to Allah. The Quran is either in the meaning of, of taqdeer, that he made the system from the beginning of the universe so that it works this way, or meaning of creation, that he creates the features and facilities, that's a similar to taqdeer, or other meanings. It's never direct, uh, the most, very rarely direct action. Well, this is very clear if you see that, uh, that for example, uh, uh, Allah gives you the rain, and another place says that the, the wind the wind will, will, will excite uh, uh, clouds and the clouds will bring the rain. It's correct. But, but the one they tell you is just a final result, which is, uh, which expressed that it is all is, is, it could not have happened without Allah making a taqdeer of the universe in the beginning, that it will be, there will be something called water, there will be winds, and there will be imbalances of the, of the turbulence in the air, etc., etc. All of this long chain going maybe billions of years. Ultimately, the rain is from whom? From him, ultimately. In the final conclusion, so I said, he gave you rain. He will send you rain. Yes, through this complex mechanism. And some places he mentioned parts of the mechanism, etc. So actions like Dalal, Huda, but not only that, even bringing rain and so on, if it's attributed to Allah, it doesn't mean it is done by him directly as a, as a, in a miraculous way or, or something. No, it can be done through chains of cases and effects. Here, in the case of Mayudullah, whom, whom, whom Allah misguides, meaning whom Allah is allowed to, to go against God because he shows to the misguidance and Allah allowed everyone to choose whatever he chooses. Otherwise, no, no, no entity can, can be having a free, a free choice. If that's so, then you will not find any way for him. If Allah allowed that to happen and he shows it for him and did all the necessary steps to go astray, oh, who can save him? Nobody can save him. So here, Mayudlillah, who Allah misguides, must be understood in the correct way. This is not a direct action of Allah. It means then, essentially, whom Allah has permitted to go astray because he shows the misguidance for himself, you will not find anyone helping him. As no, we can. And then now we'll say, who are these munafiqeen actually? We discussed munafiqeen before. There must be some kind of strange people, some entity. What are they? The next ayah explained what were the main reason and the main source which lead to nifaq. There are obvious cases of nifaq. Someone, for example, the Prophet arrives in Medina, but we know he arrived in Medina, he did not have a sword in his hand. And he was not even the head of the state. We know that for a fact now of the Sahih and so on, and many other evidences. And even if he became a head of the state, he was never enforcing people in his belief. And even when he was confronted by some munafiqeen, 
or some people insulting him face to face, he never did anything to them. So the type of Munafiqeen, which most people think that when Islam came to Medina, they, they announced Islam why they don't believe in him internally. Just so just may, maybe there are a few cases like that. He was afraid if he did not announce his wife would leave him, which became a Muslim or something like that. Maybe some few rare cases like, but even that I, I barely remember any case. Like for example, when the first arrived, Um Sulaim, the mother of Anas ibn Malik, became Muslim. Her husband hated Islam and the Prophet to the tune that he, I think, divorced her and left the, left the city and went to Shah. Say, so I cannot tolerate to be in the same city with, with the Prophet, with, with this man. Bye. My salama, bye. So no, nobody needed any really to, to, to uh, 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 I could imagine maybe someone in deep, deep love with his wife and wife became Muslim, that he will pronounce Islam just not, not to lose hair and to alienate hair. And really he doesn't believe, maybe a rare case. Would be, that would be. Right? Medina had maybe a thousand families. Well, you expect at least 10% of them being deep in love with their wives and maybe one of them, or oddly the wife became Muslim, he doesn't become. Yeah, maybe one like that. Well, it's not really a category the Quran will discuss back and forth and forth and back and back and forth. No. The real nifaq, major issue of nifaq, which we discussed even in the ayah, Malakum fi Mavakina fi Atain, is the relation, the relation to the kuffar and the alliance and the afraid that if you don't, if I don't break my relation with them and my allegiance and alliance, I will lose position. I may, I may be attacked by another enemy and nobody protect me. All of these considerations of allegiance, alliance, and, 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 protecting your own interest, protecting your position in society, protecting your wealth, thinking that by allying to the kuffar, you will protect that. That's the mere source of nifaq. So it's not necessarily he doubts the prophet, but he doesn't believe he's not willing to, to commit to believe sufficiently to be a, be a real believer. That's it. It's not necessarily he doesn't believe he's a messenger. Some of them did not believe. Yes, deep, some of Like Ibn Abdullah ibn Abayi Surur, all his statements are very clear, indicating he doesn't believe that he's a prophet but he went along because he wanted to protect his power position and his tribe. Otherwise, they will run away from him because the majority became Muslims, they will not tolerate him in the leadership if he does not believe to be a Muslim. But what was the reason for that? What, 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 what broke his back? What, what is the stumbling block? The I, next I explain that. I want the believer to go this, this, to this abyss. Ya ayuhal ladina amunu, la tattakhidu kafirina awliya amidunil mu'mineen. Oh, you who have attained to faith, do not take the deniers of the truth for your allies in preference to the believers. Do you want to place before God a manifest proof of your guilt? Next translation. Believers, do not take the unbelievers as allies and protectors instead of the believers. Do you want to offer God clear evidence of your guilt? Yeah. Or just clear, or clear a recourse for your punishment. Because if you do that, then Allah has a clear recourse because Allah will not punish you unless he has a clear, a clear recourse that he has obliged himself not to punish or do any harm to anybody unless this one just leave it, leaves no excuse whatsoever. So do you want to Allah to, uh, to give Allah really a reason against you to punish? This is a very strong appeal. Allah does not, was not looking for a reason, but this way you are voluntarily putting yourself in trouble. But one of the strongest way of really threatening that this is the way to the catastrophe. So don't take the, 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 the disbelievers uh, allies in this exclusion of disbelievers. And the clear, the clear translation of that is that uh, and a, clear, a clear version which makes you a clear capital in discussion if you fight under the banner against believer. That's it, that is over. Fighting under their banner, the believer is definitely an act of cover, which is halas, finish. There's no excuse, no escape, nothing can be done about that. Whatsoever. That's that's the finish, the end station. And that's what that's what will lead to that. So you see, this ayah comes before that we're discussing about the Munafiqeen and they're wavering between these, they're wavering between believer and non-believer. Who will give us protection? Who will grant us uh, uh, more business transaction? With whom will be doing more business, having more money? Maybe if we if we have good relation with them and ally with them against the believer, then we have maybe access to their markets. All these things are what going in the heads of the Manafiqeen of Medina. Otherwise, why they should bother about Quraysh? That's the only thing about Quraysh. Quraysh is controlling the banks, controlling the money, controlling the roads to, to, to Sham and Yemen for business transaction, and also a major business partner taking our, our uh, dates and so on and bringing other goods to us. And if we 
do not show at least a cooperation and Allah allegiance to them, then we will lose all of these facilities or maybe in danger. Then the nifaq starts. And if it goes to the level that someone even separates, go and join them, then it is a clear cover like in Malak of the And then what is the end result for, for these kind of nifaq and munafiqeen? It's clear. It's the worst result ever. It's a, the, the, the worst possible destination. This is even worse than the Kafirin. In the Munafiqeen of the Dark, as Fali bin Anar, one and Tajir Rahm Nasir. Verily, the hypocrites shall be in the lowest depth of the fire, and thou wilt not find none who could succor them. The yeah. translation the hypocrites will be in the lowest depth of hell, and you will fi find no one to help them. Exactly. So they will be the lowest of the law in your Qiyamah. Because they didn't, they prefer to, they didn't have the character to, to assert themselves and say, oh, now we join the Kufa, we are not going to join Muhammad. Or we join Muhammad and we just in full and completely. No, no, we have to be a bit here, a bit there. We can't do it. the business of section, we can't do that. We can't allow this to here. They say, oh, they're wavering here and there. But there's an exception. Except it shall be they who repent and live righteously and hold fast unto God and show and grow sincere in their faith in God alone. For these shall be one with the believers, and in time God will grant to all believers a mighty reward. Next translation, except for those who repent, make amends, hold fast to God, and are devoted in their faith to Him alone. They are one with the believers. God will grant a mighty reward to the believers. Well, that's the meaning is clear, but clear if it's repent, if you regret after that, but it's not enough to repent. Repent, you have to correct the previous mistakes, whatever can be amended. So you, know, you, you do the necessary amending as much as possible, and then hold firm to Allah SWT and pure to Him alone. Because the, 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 the reason for falling to that abyss was not holding to Allah alone and being, uh, being fully devoted to him. That's what led them to that. So the repent just may regretting I try to do I mean, this unless you really do that with the intention to be now completely devoted to Allah and his messenger and the believer and stop this waver. If you don't have that, then there's not repentance. It's just a joke. You are, you are, you are just regretting and tomorrow you will be, ah, but my business will be in danger, go back to the capital. And so on. That's that's not that's not repentant. That's not a valid repentant. So the, repent, the fundamental principles of repentance is that regretting what has happened, correcting whatever can be amended. Sometimes it can't be amended. Then you hope Allah will help you and amend the Yamukay like killing someone. We cannot really select them from the dead. It's not a can be that. Then about that. But maybe part amended, but that you surrender your to this legitimate Islamic authority to take to work and accept whatever punishment is being coming your way. That's that, that's maybe part of that. I mean, but and then in the case of murder, it's clear obviously that you have the firm intention never to do it again and so on to control yourself and anger, etc. etc. But in the case of the fact that you will be hold firm to the Allah and His Messenger and the believer and not go back to wavering, oh, my, my power, my authority will be in danger, my business will be gone, I will not get a bank, I will not get the necessary bank line of credit and so on. That, that, that did not repent really. We just regret it and you go back to wavering back and forth. So you're still a monarch. You're not, you're not out, of the, out, out, out of hell yet. No, you have to. You have to get this. You have to break, break this cycle of wavering back and forth by firmly holding to Allah and His deen. So this is, the, this is, this is a very st strict condition so that the, the, the repentance makes sense and will be accepted. But if it's accepted and they, they, just, they are joined to the believer, then the believer, Allah has promised a mighty reward. Then another kind of appeal, like more emotional. Why would, God, why would God cause you to suffer for your past sins if you are grateful and attained to belief? Seeing that God is always responsive to gratitude, all knowing. Next, next translation Why should God punish you for your past sins if you become thankful and believe in Him? God is always responsive to gratitude and is all knowing. As again, again, I think what was was bug them to not translate the word shakir as God is appreciating, but God is thankful. This is the exact Arabic word. They said responsive to to God. No, He is Himself. He appreciates what people do. That's indeed a divine attribute. Although everything is already for Him, all the facilities and power you have, still if you use it the proper way, He appreciates that coming from you. So the Allah is shakir and shakur. He's very appreciating. He's very thankful. 
that's just the, the, I, I don't know what else was bugged in their mind. Maybe thought this is this undermining the divine rank is not. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. Like for example, the story of this uh, uh, this uh, Israeli prostitute which uh, came to a well and there was obviously no robes and no buckets and so on. So she climbed down and drank, and when she got up, she found the dog almost dying of of, of thirst. So this dog is suffering so much thirst, like I was suffering before. So she went down because there's no bucket. So she filled her her uh, boot, and because how to climb again? So she put the boot between her teeth and climbed. Obviously, you can imagine how difficult to climb this to give the the to give water to the and Allah appreciated that so much. He was so thankful for her behavior that he forgave everything in the past. So Allah is very thankful and very appreciating. Nobody should hesitate translating Shakir as Allah is thankful and appreciating. And he's Allah, obviously, he's not full, full uh, comprehensive knowledge. He knows the people who really repent and the people who do good deeds out of goodness of the heart and the real deep motivation of kindness and so on. And he will appreciate that. Allah, he thanked that, that pursuit for that act and forgive all her past and entered her paradise. So just spoke up because of that clear devotion, that climbing up with, with, the, with the boot in, in the teeth, filling the boot, holding it in the teeth and climbing in hardship just for kindness to this animal. Allah will not let anyone outclass him in kindness. He is even more kinder than that. So he granted forgiveness. So he's appreciating his appreciation. So the title of Allah is most appreciating or most thankful is perfectly fine. Should be written capital and used. Nobody should go say Allah is the one who acknowledge, acknowledge the uh, appreciate uh, appreciation and thankful. No, no, he is himself having this attribute. It's a very good divine attribute, very high divine attribute. I think that these what trans translators were not say were not lucky. They did not. They did not find the, find the right way because they said that the perception of Allah is maybe not a, not really the, the, the thorough and, and clean one. Next ayah: "لا يحب الله الجهر بسوء من القول إلا من ظلم كان الله سميعا عليما." God does not like any evil to be mentioned openly unless it be by him who has been wronged thereby, and God is indeed all hearing, all knowing. Next translation. God does not like any evil to be mentioned openly unless someone has been wronged. God is all hearing and all knowing. So they're accusing people of, of wrongdoing, they say they're insulting people and so on because certain misdeeds, Allah does not like that. And this is really you have been wronged and you have the right here to, to, call, to mention what has been happening to you and accuse the other side of their misdeeds. But I'm just accusing by this because there's a rumor that they someone did something like that and so on, or did something. Or it did so someone else, and you take it to someone else's side as a support for him. Because if someone is wrong, you should feel that you have been wronged, and you can also use against the wrong. But after you have also verified and being sure, so that's that's the a main principle that accusations and 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 uh, and uh, mention evil things and so on should be avoided. In society society should be people should be talking only about good things, mentioning good behavior of the others, mentioning all good aspects of the others as much as possible, unless there's some wrong wrong done to someone which you need to be expressed and need to be complained to authorities, written in media and so on. But just writing things for scandalization and then the negative propaganda, Allah does not like that. And this way the society and the, the community will be uh, the hearts will be clean from that. So you should go for more house. When you hear the news nowadays, you see, you hear so many things about so negative things that you walk in the street, you look at every one of them, oh, this guy maybe of this type, maybe this type. You don't feel comfortable with uh, moving the hub, only the worst idea about other human beings because the amount of negative news, which is not warranted, but seems to be the media like these news. Uh, and uh, that's the way they listen because the human beings are, are having this, this tendency love gossiping and, 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 and they inflame that. Allah is going to undermine that. Stop that. Don't do it. Unless someone has been wronged and he has a valid reason to say that in public, in media, in courts, etc. Otherwise, no need for all these things. And Allah is all hearing and all knowing. So don't think Allah does not hear. He means and he knows. Next time, in tubdu khayran utukhfuhu ya'u ta'fu an su' fa inda Allah kana afuwan qadira. Whether you do good openly or in secret, or pardon others for evil done unto you, for behold, God is indeed an absolver of sins, infinite in his power. Next translation. 
If you do good openly or in secret, or pardon others for something bad done to you, then God is most forgiving and powerful. So this is encouragement. So that do, do good, in that case, public and secret. Public is good because you, get, you may be a model, although there's a danger that you may be, the, the devil may suck you into, into a self-aggrandization or into showing off. So you have to be, take care, watch carefully for yourself that it doesn't get, that didn't glide because it's like a slippery slope doing, doing good things publicly. There's always the temptation when you do things publicly, people will praise you or will show admiration. The, the ex, fa, fa, facial expression will be good and so on. That may glide you into showing off, do the next good just for showing off. And that's, you have to be aware about this danger, but it's still good, show good. But if the occasion is so, and you have to show good now, yeah, it should not prevent you from showing good that uh, there may be a danger of showing off. No, no, let me do it. Let me do it. And I will, uh, I will treat myself and look at self careful. So if you think when doing something good in public at the moment, I hope it is not uh, uh, showing off. This means you are aware about the danger of showing off. Then do it. Don't worry. Do it. It will be a good example. And the next one, you will be also alert and cautious. So no problem. So doing good publicly and secretly, although secretly is always preferable generally, especially in charity, I think like that, because obviously the other side will be less embarrassed and so on, for it has an added benefit. And besides, obviously, the enormous benefit of avoiding any showing off or any being sucked by the devil into this slavery slope. So Allah would like that to, to happen and encourage it. Or if you forgive anything harm done to you, which you could have taken revenge and, uh, and took compensation, but you have forgiven that, but you could. You, uh, forgiveness, some people think forgiveness is giving up your eyes. No, that's not forgiveness. That's just cowardice. That's, that's violating the ayahs even in Mecca. And those who if they oppressed, they take victory. They come back. They don't accept. They have, they have, they have self-assertion. They have character. They have personality. No, no, that's not helpful. That's not forgiveness. That's the forget forgiveness. If you're able and you have the facility to, like for example, you suing someone, he took your money, a rifle, and so on, and, and you win the case, then you can't tell the court, I'm, I'm forgiving him. I don't want him any help, but I wanted to show that he is obliged to pay and he should have not done that. That's it. That's fine. That's it. Not before. Or if you know that you can't sue him and you can't get it, but you decide, okay, let me forgive that. And you can, and you have the facility. So uh, forgiveness only for the one who can ex accept uh, revenge or accept uh, compensation, but he decided to forgo. So if you forgive in this, in, in this regard, then know that Allah is also forgiveness for that and capable to give you more forgiveness and give you more reward than what you have or more compensation that we have missed by this forgiveness. And then just uh, again, as, as usual, there's the Quran after some various injunctions. Here, these injunctions are more injunction related to, uh, how do you say? It's all, it contains ahkam shari'iyah, but it's more the issues of the heart and how the mind and how the intentions are rather than external action, which is usually the, the issue of fiqh sharia. But this is more like the moral and the spiritual aspects of, of, uh, of various transactions, although publicly uh, complaining about injustice and so on and secrecy, etc., is covered here. This is something that is the public order also, but you know, it's more for the moral side. Now, as usual, from top to time, issues of fundamental aqidah comes. And the next ayah, obviously, it relates to some 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 people and some people mentioned before in some in some sense. So it fits in the stream where people come after. And clarifying certain issues uh, about about uh, what belief and uh, and, uh, and the belief of all messengers. Of the, that's most likely this is addressing specifically the Jews, but it's universal. In the Dina Kuruna Billahi or Rusuli, we read Una, you Fereko by the Lahi or Rusuli, where Kuruna no Mir Bab, like for the Bab, we read Una Tahdu by Nadali Kasabila. Verily, those who deny God and his apostles by endeavoring to make a distinction between belief in God and a belief in his, apostle, in, in his apostles, and who say, we believe in the one, but we deny the other, and want to pass, pursue a path in between. Next translation. As for those who ignore God and his messenger by trying to make a distinction between them saying, we believe in the one, but we deny the other, and want to pursue a path in between. So this is... So there are people who reject Allah and his messenger in total, and bulk. But that's not the only type of kufr. There's another type of state saying, oh, we accept Allah. 
they call them deist. A deist who accept Allah existence and but messengers? No, no, that's just, that's just too much. We are not going to accept messengers. Accept Allah is the creator of the universe, but messengers meaning the, there are injunctions and there is restrictions and then we give up our freedom and we can and we cannot do as we please and we cannot rampage as we like. No, that's just, that's too much. No, we are not going to. Or you say I accept Allah and some of His messengers. But we do not catch others because it doesn't fit our desires. Uh, Jesus is nice. He's a very nice fellow. He's calling for forgiveness and this reported all this once like a fabricated that he didn't even stone an adulteress, although she should have been stoned against you. So this man is nice. He's gentle. He's a smooth guy. Muhammad, no, no, no. This one is waging wars and striking the next. Mm, we don't like this one. No, this one is, a, is more like a war, a warlord. Uh, he looks like a messenger, but no, 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 no. no. God cannot send warlords after sending that gentle, uh, lovely guy called Jesus. No, no, it's not acceptable. No, no. The people will worship. Or oh, oh, we accept our the prophets from Bani Israel, but how come that, uh, that we are the chosen people and then suddenly messenger would uh, go to outside us? Even worse, goes to the grandson of a slave woman. Yeah, they call them they call the Arab the Saracens. Saracens mean the the... Uh, the, the the sons of Sa Sarah's slave because uh, Hajar used to be uh, owned by Sarah she gave her as a gift to Ibrahim so the Sarah says <laughs> so you Arabs and Muslims you are just the grandsons of a slave woman <laughs> and you prophets of this category we are not going to give full of profit of this uh, of the descent and leave these high ranking sons of the free no 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 so that's that's some people come from the same you know, He's not from the high class of human being, not from Rahman class. He's an untouchable, maybe. So <laughs> all kinds of excuses, all that's not gonna work. So all of these who try that and try to find a sneaking way between that and not believing in Allah and Allah and all his messenger, what what is the what is the stage? It is they. They who are truly denying the truth. And for those who deny the truth, we have ready shameful suffering. Next translation. It is they who are truly unbelievers. We have prepared a humiliating punishment for the unbelievers. So this is the, this is the utmost of disbelief. Especially the last one who believe in some messengers and lesser. They are even worse than anybody before them. The one between make a distinction that Allah and all the messenger may have a point here. Yeah, he's the creator of the universe. We don't think the creator of the universe will be bothered about creation. But he's just enjoying this cosmic drama, expressing his, his creative power like an artist, like Da Vinci, the drawing the Mona Lisa. He's just expressing his, his power. That's fine. That's good. That's befitting for the divine. Sending messengers? That looks like, uh, like treating us like kids and so on. That's what the, the deists say, essentially. That's also kufr, but it's less dramatic than the one who said, I will accept some messenger, will accept no others. This is going real to irrationality and stupidity to the extreme. But the other ones before them, the deists are also stupid. And obviously, do say Allah should say there's no good and no messenger. These are also kafir, but they are the, the, the most reasonable category because it's consistent. There's no God, no messengers, by necessity. they are. That always fits together. The only issue is that does a God exist or not? So it's just like in block. That seems to be the least the, the least miserable or irrational of a position. It's an irrational and a kufr position, but it's not as bad as trying to uh, uh, claim that you believe in that God is the creator, but he's not a commander or that, which is internally contradictory, or even worse, that he's a creator, commander, he said messenger, but some messenger you don't like because they have a flat nose or they uh, come from, uh, from a lower class. That's not that. That's the ultimate then in, in, in stupidity, irrationality, and projection. So all of them are the three, the last one, are the, truly the, the real disbeliever and the real who deserve a shameful punishment of Qiyamah. And the opposite, that's all the people who are the ones 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 who are Rewards in full, and God is indeed much forgiving, a dispenser of grace. Next translation. As for those who believe in God and his messengers and did not make any distinction between his messengers, God will grant them their reward. God, it, their rewards. God is most forgiving and merciful to all. So the opposite class now, these who have a shameful punishment, 
because of whether this belief in Allah his messenger in, in block or in try to wedge, make a wedge between Allah and his messenger could declare that to be deists or uh, believe in some messenger and reject others just by, 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 by no good reason whatsoever. Good. The same principle applied to every messenger and the same, the same fundamental obedience is due to every one of them if, it's, if he's proven as a messenger. Definitely, let's assume it has been proven. In opposite to that, we have those who believe in Allah and his messenger and they make no distinction between any one of them. Respect all of them, accept all of them as messengers. These will be granted all, given all the rewards in the future, not now. And now, maybe some reward will come, but it's not, dunya is not at the domain of the reward. You may get some reward, you may become victorious, you may get established, maybe not. You may, you may never, you may not know. That's not relevant. So far, in the future, we'll give them all rewards. And Allah has full, full, full forgiveness, all, full, uh, all forgiving, all merciful. And then now with the, now with the people who are really, this, this introduction is really uh, preparing for, for, the, uh, for, for the attack against the people of the book, especially the Jews in Medina. Mostly the people of the book of Medina were Jews, although maybe a few Christians there. But it's essentially in the majority, and the, most, the people who are most argumentative are the Jews. يسألك أهل الكتاب أن تنزل عليهم كتابا من السماء وقد سألوا موسى أكبر من ذلك فقالوا أرنا الله جهرة فأخذتهم الصاعقة بظلمهم ثم اتخذوا العجل من بعد ما جاءتهم البينات فعفونا عن ذلك وأتينا موسى سلطانا مبينا The followers of the Old Testament demand of the O Prophet that thou, that thou cause a revelation to be sent down to them from heaven and an even greater thing than that than this did they demand of Moses, when they said, make us see God face to face, whereupon the thunderbolt of punishment overtook them for their wickedness. After that, they took to worshipping the golden calf, and this after all the evidence of the truth had come to, unto them. Nonetheless, we efface this sin of theirs and vouchsafe unto Moses a clear proof of the truth. Next translation. The people of the book demand that you, Prophet, make a good, make a book physically come down to them from heaven. They demand even more than this from Moses. They demand they demanded even more than this from Moses when they said, Let us see God face to face. And when they were struck by a thunderbolt of punishment for their presumption, even after clear revelations had come down to them, they started worshipping the, the calf. We pardoned this and gave Moses clear authority. Yeah. So that's that's the so they're asking Moses, they're asking, look, Moses got us a tablet. Yeah. And uh, these are supposed to be uh, carved from the rock and written by the divine uh, fingers or pen, pen of fire engraved there. Hopefully one day when we find these tablets, we'll see how it is being done. It's most likely like that, they have a pen of fire. So they are coming from heaven cut like that. That's only the Ten Commandments. All the other injunction of Musa, where they believe and follow him, are done by him orally. And even reported, God said that. So, say, so the, 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 just a part of the book is coming from heaven. Is, is not what, what made, made them believe in Musa or, or evidence of a prophet. Evidence of is brought before that by, by, the, by the stick turning the snake and his hand turning white and the, 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 the nine miracles infested to the people of Pharaoh. So come, coming, coming from heaven or not coming from heaven is not there, but it's just a bonus or a specific a specification for Musa. Same as when say, uh, think that he was addressed by Allah directly. Other prophets were not directly directly addressed this way. That's just a specialty of Musa. For who the reason we don't know. Allah knows the reason for that. Allah said, "Don't be grieving about this demand because they ask Musa. Even even Musa, they claim they believe in. They ask something bigger than that. Because when he took the delegation to repent for the." Uh, for the take, for the, uh, adopting the uh, the golden calf, I would come to the calf again once we just with a small comment. I think I commented in the beginning of the a bit of it. They asked, okay, they came uh, supposed to be a delegation to over with him to the Mount Sinai up there, and uh, Allah spoke to them and let them hear him speaking to Musa. They say, oh yeah, <clears throat> maybe you have a recording device behind the moment. <laughs> I don't know what they said at the time, but I'm trying to imagine. Because at the time, we did not have megaphones. <laughs> so who is supposed to be talking there? Maybe they thought you have hidden some man behind the, behind the, uh, the rock there who is talking loudly. Uh, this is not God or something. We, have, we need to see your God face to face to believe. 
<laughs> These people are very hopeless. Anyway, they were stuck with the lightning and they died. And most of the are under. If I go with my people with dead bodies, I will be, be ashamed. I will be in the Old Testament as all his lamentations is written all details. And you expect that yeah, that's what has happened. Allah did not mention all these details, but there's no reason to mention that. Then Allah revived them for him and forgave that. And then they came back and reported what has happened. Then once to Matahul Ajil, even worse, that's if you told here after that, it's not after that time, or it's actually before that. Although they have seen the evidences before that in, in the people of Pharaoh and so on, that the Ajil is just uh, 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 cannot be divine, a contemporary representation of the divine. And we have forgiven all of that. Now, once adopted the Ajil, you find in all translation, the Quran says the Ajil, adopted the Ajil. And everyone translates, worship the Ajil. So, what is, is there's a problem there? Yes, there's a problem. I think I said that in Bakara, but let me repeat again. They did not worship the Ajil as a separate deity. They adopted the Ajil, the calf, as a representation of Allah, as an idol of Allah. So they imagined Allah can be represented and appears to humans in a form of Ajil. That's it. So they didn't adopt another deity. They just adopted the Ajil as an idol of Allah. That's what they did. And if you read all the Quran, this is exactly the expression used. But nobody in history seems to accept one, one Mufassir. I don't think of the name, but it's in the book of Tawheed. Inshallah, it'll come. I don't think it will come with the second part. It will be in the third part when discussing the Shirk al Arab. What's the meaning of adopting the Ajil is there? He noticed that, said, it can't be that, that they are having another God beside Allah. They thought maybe Al Ajil is Allah, or Al Ajil is the presentation of Allah. That's the only one Mufassir in the entire past who got that idea, the correct one. Yes, that's it. They do not associate with Allah's partner. They were still monotheist, but they believed Allah can be represented by Ajit, or the Ajit is the manifestation of Allah. Despite there have been all the strictly that Allah cannot have any material manifestation in that sense, there will be no idol for Allah possible. And the whole Old Testament is having full injection. Don't make a molten image of uh, God, don't even, not from wood, not from stone, not from metal. Nothing can be represented by Allah. And all of this mess and all of this translation have been forgiven. And we are given most of the dominance and the evidences, which is so evident and clear that nobody can deny. And not only that, after that, there was, a, there was offering a covenant. And they were hesitating. So Allah pulled the mount, complete mountain and let the mountain turn around on top of them as if he's going to fall and going up and down in a threatening way. Imagine a mountain on top of you, which come down to crush you into so into essentially soap. And we took the covenant and then put the sword. Let me read the ayah first. ورفعنا فوقهم الطور بميثاقهم وقلنا لهم ادخلوا الباب سجدا وقلنا لا تعدوا في السب وأخذنا منهم ميثاقا غليظا. Read first and then we translate. Raising Mount Sinai above them in witness for, of their solemn pledge. And we said unto them, enter the gate humbly. And we told them, do not break the Sabbath law. And we accepted from them a most solemn pledge. Next translation, to raise the mountain above them in witness of their solemn pledge. We said to them, enter the gate humbly and do not break the Sabbath law. We accepted from them a solemn pledge. Just a quick question on this. This is a compendium of multiple events. Because yeah, said various things. That's what, 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 uh, how, how much evidence is are against them mounting and to expose their that they that uh, all their demands are just fake because even they, they all most of these things they have done in the past and they violated. So, one of the things when the covenant was, was concluded, some were hesitating according to Old Testament, whatever it has happened, the details and that amount. And it's not necessarily Mount Al Tur, Al Tur people translated Mount Sinai, you know, is a mount, maybe is that Mount Sinai himself. The, which is called um, uh, Horeb, Mount Horeb itself, or a, a mount next to them because there were various mountains. For example, when Musa asked Allah that, uh, uh, that I want to see you, and he said, look at the mountain, there's another mountain which was crushed down. So it is very, this is a whole mountain area. And the Mount Sinai, the Mount Horeb is one specific mountain, but there are mountains around it. Some of them are massive or close massive to it. 
So that might, oh, maybe you might say itself, but the, the tour is the big mountain. So the, we lifted a huge mountain and it was circulating on top of them. And this movie about uh, the Ten Commandments is a very, very nice uh, graphic. It's an old graphic, so it's the, the 50s, but it's not bad either. You can enjoy that if you can find that old movie. Maybe it's in the internet for free uh, with the Charlton Heston, very nice movie. Uh, you show how that, uh, that has happened. And then they were thinking it will fall and they, they, they crushed him. As I mentioned, the Quran, and they give that, then they, 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 they affirmed the covenant, affirmed the covenant. And then when they were ordered to enter a certain, a certain village or a certain, a certain city uh, in a humble way, sujari, you could even translate sujada as prostrating. It's clear that nobody can enter the door. It may be also the order say, when you come to the door, the, the first group of you, because they will come like, like, a, like, a, like a demonstration, like a queue, like a long queue. The first group makes you stand up, the next one makes you and so on. It's very powerful. No, this is just humbly or, 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 or lowering the head, but it could be really sujood. Some people say, how can someone enter the door while doing sujood? Because you don't read properly. When you say entered, and you say that a, a group of people who are making a very long colon enter the door and do sujood. It's very clear that the first group arriving will make sujood, stand up and continue. Second one makes you stand up and continue. So it means that this, obviously, this entering is a peaceful entering, a village which is welcoming them. There's not a place they're entering by war, war, warfare and so on. We don't know this village. We don't know where it has been. Most likely it's in Jordan, the current Jordan, Allah Adam. And then instead of doing that, some of them mocking. Instead of, uh, because they were ordered to say, say, hitta, hitta meaning, uh, bring down our sin, remove the sin from our shoulders, clean us from sin. And they, the narration, that's not a Quran term, uh, but the Quran says, when they enter the door, instead of say hatta, some of them at least, at least a good number of them, they were mocking the word hatta or something. I say, the Arabic narration claimed that they say, like making a music, like mocking. Mocking, mocking the, the, the command of Allah. Somehow they change the word into something it seems to be. Maybe that, that change is like that, what, what has been narrated. <laughs> you expect from, from people such stubborn and stupid people something like that. Instead of saying, Hatta, or forgive us, like, um, like dump us or something like that. Instead of saying, forgive us for Gaba, for dick us or something like something, some mutilating words which doesn't make any sense. And they were punished for that. <laughs> Those the ones who, who did this this miserable change of words and you know in a mockery way. So they were even they still have people who who have still the, after all of this still the the, the the audacity still to be mocking Allah's words and changing it and playing with them, or making a song out of them. And then further, we called them not to break the We ordered them not to break the Sabbath to respect the Sabbath according to injunction. They have that the Sabbath should be devoted only for, for worship and study and so on, not for work, not with certain injunctions. Obviously, they have exaggerated and make it so complicated now in the Talmud that it became almost like a nightmare and they needed to invent tricks what to do about that. But anyway, the original injunction is that this Sabbath from the sunset of Friday, that's the beginning of the Sabbath, because the day in the Jewish counting is from the sunset to the sunset. So the end of uh, Friday, with the sunset, on that moment, no, no earning money, no dunya issues, just worship, supplication, study, Torah, etc., and possibly fasting, etc., until the sunset of the next day. Then normal life goes back to it. So devote one day for this. Structure your life in a well-organized way. That's the objection of the Sabbath. And what they did, they broke it, as we know, with all kinds of tricks, like putting the, uh, like putting the uh, the nets for the fish on Friday. So you were not doing anything in Sabbath, but on Friday, I collect on Sunday, <laughs> because the fish was coming only on, on Saturday. <laughs> a, a, a massive test from Allah SWT to them. And the other days they don't have a set, there was no fish. But there it comes and jumps out to the water. They could not control themselves. So they said, okay, ah, that's no problem. We put the net on Friday. And collected on Sunday with the wallet in the net, as if, they, as if that work is not done on Saturday. The catching is not done on Saturday. They think with these simple minded idiotic tricks, they can't get the 
and then many other things. We took from them very binding, very severe, very heavy, heavy covenants. Yeah. Did we translate that ayah before? We did. Or we didn't? Yes, we did. We did. Yeah. We did. Yeah. So that's it. So all of these things has happened to them. So the Prophet should not be dismayed if that's all happened to Musa and all that suffering. I don't expect it to be the effect after 1,500 years, almost, no, no, 2,000 years almost, because the Prophet was 600 something, and all these events in, are there most, almost certainly in 1,450 before Christ. So that's total of 2,000 years. If you get after 2,000 years back of transgressions and scattering all over the world and so on, they will become better? No, they became worse. فبما نقضهم ميثاقهم وكفرهم بآيات الله وقتلهم الأنبياء بغير حق وقولهم قلوبنا غلف بل طبع الله عليها بكفرهم فلا يؤمنون إلا قليلا. And so we punish them for the breaking of their pledge and their refusal to acknowledge God's message, messages and their slaying of prophets against all right and their boast. Our hearts are already full of knowledge. Nay, but God has sealed their hearts in result of the denial of the truth. And now they believe in but few things. Next translation. We punish them for breaking their pledge, for their refusal to acknowledge God's messages, for unjustly killing their prophets, and for saying, our hearts are sealed. No, God has sealed their hearts as a result of their unbelief. And now they only believe in a few things. Yeah, or only a few of them believe. That means either the few, only a few things, all of them, or some of them are true believers, but a few of them, and the rest are not believers. They don't believe except a few of them. Or they don't, or they don't believe except in few things, which they stick to it, to, to it, like Musa is a prophet and so on. That's well established. They are not denying that. But anything else of relevance, they are not believing in it. So because of that, the continuation of the punishment will come. But it's because of that, the later specification of punishment will come because of the break of their covenant. So they have broken their covenant. So if they claim that they have a covenant with Allah, that's not true. It has been broken. And even if it has been used several times, that's broken. Now it's gone, finished. It's not, it will never come back. And the rejection of Allah's science, which some of it have mentioned before, and some of history, clear one will clear, clear some of, the, uh, of those in history, is the killing of prophets without justification. Yeah. Through history, they have been killing prophets in, in its course without any justification. Someone who says, how can be a prophet killed with any justification? Even, even, listen, even, even if we assume a prophet can be killed with justification, it may be, may happen. Rational, it is not a rational reason to, to prevent a prophet from committing a sin and uh, being worthy of punishment by, by, by execution. But, but that's never happened. And they were killing them even because they were carrying da'wah and bringing an injunction to the kings. And then they also their arrogant claim that our heart are sealed or our heart full of knowledge and sealed the knowledge we don't need. We don't need to open heart for, for, for you what you say. Well, full of knowledge, we are already sealed. We, we have achieved the highest rank of, 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 of certification and knowledge. I say, no, their heart is not full of knowledge, it's not sealed on knowledge. It is, it is sealed by Allah's, Allah's the action, indirect action, obviously, because of their disbelief. But if someone disbelieves, the system the universe is so as designed from the beginning of the creation is that the nature of the human mind or any created mind of our creation which can, can be addressed or commandments and had the choice to accept or not accept. The result is that by this rejection, after you have seen evidence of the truth, then your mental capability, your, the way your mind will work will come twisted upside down. It will, you will not be able to recognize the truth and not be able to advance in knowledge. You get stuck. You get your heart will be sealed. You are not able to receive new knowledge because the correct methodology of receiving knowledge, the moment you receive knowledge and you have the evidence you accept it, you build on that and receive the next one. If you're the first one you reject it, then you have finish. You cannot receive new things and add to knowledge because knowledge is additive for humans. The more you know, the more you establish, then you establish you're on top of it. You don't go back and demolish everything by rejecting the, the basic uh, fundamental. So that's what the meaning Allah sealed their heart. By necessity of, of, of the, the design of the human or even any created mind is that if you don't accept the truth and recognize that you are limited and that you can learn more and you have to build on that knowledge and other knowledge and other knowledge, if you don't recognize that, then you will not be able to go forward. You will be seen, you will be stuck. And that's exactly what happened to them. So yeah. few Sorry. of them believe or few or, or they believe only in few things and that, that's it, all that they have. 
Is there any parallel with uh, scholarship today and, you know, for example, closing the gates of Ishtihad? It's, you know, like a just... Yeah, there's, there's some parallels. Yeah, yeah. We have RG ship, everything. Even some of them claim, what, when Isa comes back, assuming he comes back, obviously there's a controversy, but let's assume when he comes back, with which madhab he would be, I would say, definitely with madhab of Hanifa, the Sahanafi saying that. They, but they reached such an arrogance level of the, the scholar, they think they have, they have got all problems solved and all issues uh, verified. Although you can check many issues they have not even verified properly. But because, because of exactly this, although this is obviously the, it is not the, 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 uh, reached that level of extreme, but it is on the way to that. And ultimately it ends what you see now in Al-Azhar and how and the Council of Senior Scholars of Saudi Arabia. And they're completely stuck, they're completely hopeless. Whatever bring, evidence you bring to the table, they bring what that scholar said, what Mashaikh said, what this said, who did you study on, what's your sheikh, what's your, this is the book, read the Quran. No, 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 we know what, we know what to understand. If you don't understand, we are the one who, the one of knowledge. Our hearts are sealed, are full, perfect, full, closed on the correct knowledge. And they end almost with the same day, the uh, catastrophic decline into, into nifaq and, 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 uh, and, uh, and disbelief like the Jews. But it's not only that, but uh, that, that's what happened, but it's even more to come. And for their refusal to acknowledge the truth and the awesome calumny which they utter against Mary. Next translation, and because they denied the truth and uttered a terrible slander against Mary. That's, that's in addition to that, uh, that at the, the end of their time, before they were scattered and completely smashed after that. Uh, so it was uh, that's the last chance. That's the last chance and they lost it. Uh, they rejected, them, uh, uh, rejected the messenger of Allah, Isa ibn Maryam and his mother, and they even fabricated enormous lies and publication against Maryam. And then the one, uh, the one who were involved directly, especially their Sanhedrin, or most of the and their tribe, and so on, and, and their leader, and so on, and they, and the, uh, in, in, in the plot against Isa alayhi salam, and then bragging about that, وَقَوْلِهِمْ إِنَّ قَتَلْنَا الْمَسِيحَ عِيسَى بْنَ مَرِيمَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ وَإِنَّ الَّذِينَ اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ لَفِي شَكَّ مِنْهَ وَمَا لَهُمْ بِمِنْ عِلْمْ إِلَّا اتِّبَاعَ الظَّنِّ وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ يَقِينًا and, and, and their boast, behold, we have, slain, we have slain the Christ Jesus, son of Mary, who claimed to be an apostle of God. However, they did not slay him, and neither did they crucify him, but it only seemed to them as if it had been. And so, so, so and verily, those who hold conflicting views thereon, uh, are indeed confused, having no real knowledge thereof and following mere conjecture. For of a certainty, they did not slay him. Next translation. And said, we have killed the Messiah Jesus, son of Mary, the messenger of God. However, they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him, though it was made to appear as if it had been so. Those who disagree are confused, having no real knowledge to follow, any uh, real knowledge to follow, only supposition. They certainly did not kill him. So the so first they're boasting. So they, they made the blood. We'll discuss the blood maybe just shortly. And uh, uh, yeah. And uh, maybe I will expand on it a little bit and we'll close today with it. Yeah. So, but before the blood, so they say, say, they say boastingly, we killed the Messiah, the Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of God. They say it that at that time, at least they say it like that in a mockery. He's neither the Messiah. Nor he is even the son of Mary. He is the son of Mary, but most likely of questionable origin, because they said Muhtan and Adima, and Messenger of God, he is not. So they're boasting with that. But their boasting is also wrong, even, even, even if it is by itself vile, but they're wrong. They never killed him, nor they crucified him. So the one in the course was not Isa, nor he was killed. But it made to us to appear to them as if it's like that. And we'll, uh, we'll mention again, we'll summarize this issue again a little bit. And those are in dispute about that. They are all in, in, in doubt. Why? Even the Christian are in doubt. Very simple reason. Even their earlier Christian apocrypha and claims that uh, is not a crucified as Isa. Also, minority said that, but they have a story that while he was carrying the cross, he fell and the man came helping him. That's more available in the current uh, gospels. And this man 
switch position with Isa, obviously it must be a transfiguration because this is in the street, everyone is looking. So people were for the moment and blinded, switching, and then, and then Isa was standing and mocking the people and laughing. That's their claim. That's in some of the apocrypha. So this is from early times, the story. But this does not became the dominant narrative because the follower of Paul became the dominant narrative, which is essentially the, the, the current Christianity. Because all the other early, the early, especially the early community in, in Jerusalem, the one who Paul called the holy men in Jerusalem, the early church, the leadership, the brother of Christ and, and uh, the early disciples, etc. they were not... Uh, uh, we don't know what they really believed and in details because even the, the, the documents attributed to them cannot be really trusted 100%. It may be, although it doesn't contain anything about the divinity of Isa or something, so it is more reliable and more, but they definitely do not, almost definitely do not believe in the divinity of Isa in contradistinction to the hinting or believing in the divinity in the case of Paul. And Paul is looking down on them because he's an educated man, he speaks Greek, he has a Roman citizenship, and these all of them, except except one person who can read and write, the rest are illiterate fishermen, according to Paul's point of view, but the lowest of the lower class. But he's a Pharisee, he's a scholar, he's a learned man. So he was looking down on them regarding as idiots and simpletons. But he didn't express like that, but in there, in a roundabout way, I was mocking them. And that narrative became the dominant one. But in early time, there was a big confusion. If that's happened or not happened, what's the purpose of what's happening? What's the reason? And all of that is based on no knowledge, except just following the conjectures. And indeed, for certainty, they do not kill him. Let me go to the next ayah, then I will comment on the story and the stop there. But Rafa'ahu Allahu ilayhu kan Allahu aziz and hakima. Nay, God exalted unto himself and God is indeed almighty wise. Rather, uh, next translation, rather God raised him up to himself. God is almighty and wise. Yeah, that's the correct answer. Raised him, actually lifted him up and they were watching and seeing the lifting up according to the current gospels in our hand. So what, what happened there? This is people speculating through history, Islamic scholars like Ibn Abbas and so on, they have various speculations about that. Good speculations, try to fill the gaps. And uh, Relying, but the problem is that they relied on, uh, on on the scripture in the hand of the Christian regarding it's more or less having a, a, a more or less a reliable narrative. It has bits of that narrative, but clearly there are bits which are not reliable and bits which are contradictory. The key of the issue is to notice that that uh, one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, which uh, the gospel attributed him that he betrayed Isa and the one guided the. the that uh, the, reg the, uh, the regiment which came to apprehend him, but they came in a, in a cohort. Cohort is something like 600 men, 700 men. In a, this is a, a well-defined well uh, defined, uh, assortment of, of military people. So this cohort, that's mentioned in, in John. John mentioned the cohort came. The other guys will say they came to apprehend him. They, without mentioning a number. But really they came, they came with, a, with a massive force, a cohort, regiment. It's like a regiment. Not a brigade, brigade is 3,000 regiment, and maybe six, seven hundred regiment. That, that just you, this is a traitor. Now, the key is when, for, for me, was that study what happened to this Judas. He, he, he disappeared from history clearly. And they needed to meet their disciples after the ascension of Isa. They needed to meet and, this, uh, and choose because it seems to be they regard the number 12 as holy representing the 12 tribes or the 12 children of Israel. So they have like the leading council or the Politburo or the guidance bureau or something. There is 12, 12. Now one is missing. Well, in addition to Isa, one is missing. One is went lost, came a traitor and gone. So they chose someone to substitute for him. That's in the acts of the apostles. Okay, where did this man disappear? Ah, now we find the key. There are two there are three stories. One is in the Gospel of Matthew, which is that he betrayed and uh, received his law, his 30, the famous 30 silver coins. Then he regretted, went back, asked the, asked the, the Pharisee, uh, oh, still is fabricated, but that's what, what is reported there. Ask them to take the money back. He doesn't want to say, no, this is money stained with blood. Now they have become something innocent. Saying, we cannot take it. Uh, well, we, 
we 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 cannot take it. It's uh, cannot take it with charity. It's blood money cannot take it with charity. But there is there's a box there in which money is collected for for uh, uh, for uh, uh, burial places for non-believer for non-Jews. That's okay. <laughs> Put it there. <laughs> it reminds me of some fatwa of, of Hanafi about usually money to be used to build a toilet to the masjid. <laughs> Similar mentality to the Billah. And the story goes that he throw that in that box, they refuse to receive it, or he throw it in a charity box or something. Maybe this is a fleshing out of the story in another source. And then went and hung himself. So he disappeared from history this way. The two stories in, in, in the Acts, the one may attributed to, to uh, Peter, and allegedly he said, he, this, this, this man who traded Christ took that, gold, that, that filthy money and bought a piece of land. Bought a piece of land. And, while, and God struck him with such a disease that his belly became huge, bigger and bigger and bigger. It was like maybe like a commodity of water or something. That. That's the claim of the story attributed to, to Peter, Simon, Simon. And then he was touring his land. So this is completely different than our story, completely and given there's no way to put them together or make the, any one of them corroborate the other. And while he's touring his land, and his land is also a bit hilly and there's some, uh, some high ground and low ground, like most of the land in Palestine is very, very hilly in some areas, where, and especially Jerusalem itself is up and down hills as well, so outside Jerusalem. And the, uh, to, to see the borders of the land and uh, have a good view, he climbed some rocks. On the top of rocks, he was looking, his lip fell down on a sharp rock, slit his belly, and his intestines poured out and he died. That's the story mentioned by Peter. Another story, attributed to someone else later in the Acts, mentioned the story again, but not in this form, but similar. You may say the second and the third story could, could be fit together somehow. It may work. <clears throat> he was also touring his land. He bought the land. He was touring his land. And then while and the, the, the gate was between rocks, like rocks to the right hand side, it's like a hilly area, stony area, rocks between, and very tight. So a uh, horse carriage can barely pass. And while he was going through the gate, a horse carriage coming running and slit his belly. Also, he has a large belly. His belly was slit and his intestine fell out. If the second, the third story can be fixed somehow, that's one, and one eyewitness saw him later there and thought he fell, and the other one was so really the slitting by there. You can fix the story this way. It's two different eyewitness accounts. But that one, even after fixing, will be impossible to fix with the one which should be the main one in the gospel, which is supposed to be written under divine guidance in Matthew. So what we can take from these stories, the man disappeared from history. We don't know how. Yeah, it's very clear. It's impossible to trust either of these stories. Except that he disappeared. And his disappearance it was set to because they needed to appoint someone to complete the 12th, a new discipline. Good? So where he disappeared? Now the speculation comes. The best which kind of fits with the Quranic and also with the historical, the best fitting is that this traitor came with them, with this regiment, big cohort, approaching the place where Isa, uh, Isa alayhi salam and his Israel were, uh, were living outside Jerusalem during the festivities, the, the festivities of uh, Easter festivities. What's the name? Fisah in Hebrew. Fisah or Fisah or something like that in this festivity. And they are poor, so they cannot afford some luxury place inside the city. So they were something almost almost like a cave, but it's not a cave. It's like a, like a, uh, uh, like a barn. One, one essentially one common room, just a bit of holes and maybe a cover in the case of rain and things like that. That's it. In a, in a garden called Gethsemane. I didn't find the, the meaning of that. It may be translated in Arabic or English. Maybe someone can check what's the meaning of Gethsemane. What's the name of that? It's the name of it used in there. Gethsemane. Obviously, you can imagine at that night, they, they, they report that Isa was subjugating and asking Allah to relieve him from this, from the day, incoming danger. So he was really uh, telling them that uh, there would be, uh, there would be an attack against me and things like that. He was praying that this, this, this cup, this bitter cup should be taken away from him. And there's a report also that two angels came and supported him. And, and the Israelites were watching, but they were not knowing what's what the discussion. Possibly, I would say if that's true, that there two angels came, they were telling him, don't worry, the situation will be fixed in a way which nobody will 
to ever conceive or, or uh, pre pre assume. So we can assume that obviously this code came slowly, bit by bit, in the dark. And when they came close, if they have torches, they get extinguish the torches. It was very late in night, almost near Fajr. Assuming this is the best time of raid, like the people raid nowadays, like the FBI raiding, or whatever they, they raid. Uh, that's the best time raid because people are exhausted, they are sleeping, and so on. It's festivity days, so they must everyone be sleeping, so they can approach, and also they can attack the place, apprehend the the, the man they want, and at the same time giving their the disciples on on opportunity to defend if they want to defend, because their idea is that is a this is like a like a leader of a terrorist a terrorist group. And he's a dangerous man. That's the reason they came with a cohort. In reality, he's not a dangerous man. They don't have any weapons whatsoever. So they rushed in, and, and you just told him, wait until I go there. They are inside. I, Isa is this one, but I will go for, to make certain. I will show you the man, and I will embrace him and kiss him, the famous Judas kiss. So you know, the one I kissed, what I think, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, that he has a, some kind of a yellow overcoat, the one with the yellow overcoat, I will kiss him, and you then rush in and apprehend him. And that's exactly what has happened. They rushed in. According to Matthew, I think, and the other uh, books, the disciples all run away. Nobody. There is a story, I think, in, in John that one of them took a sword and cut the, the ear of one of the temple servants and things like that. But most likely this fabricated because uh, it's allegedly Jesus telling him, put the sword, anyone who, who, who kills you, the sword will be killed by the sword or something like that. That's most likely fabricated to show uh, that, that Isa is very peaceful and he doesn't uh, was not fighting the Romans or vying for any kingdom or something like that. It does, does not fit really in the event, giving such a philosophical com comment in such a situation after they apprehended him. So they apprehended him and they took him. And Judas was going back with them. This is with them. So that's it. And they didn't bother even running behind the disciples because they said they had strict order, most likely get that man and don't worry about these guys. If they run away, leave them. We can't get them in due course. Don't worry about them. They are not relevant. This is the this is that's that's the head of them. If this one is gone, they will be, they will be they will be effective for nothing. So, in that moment, that's my theory. Now, a transfiguration happened. Everyone was blinded, could not see anything for a few seconds, I could not feel even the time passage by divine by divine action clearly, and they switch external appearance. When they arrived and put their hand on the one with the yellow coat. The only one who are awake and seeing what's going on is Isa himself. And Isa most likely is instructed by the angels that this is what happened. He knows what happened. But Judas obviously is dumbstruck. He saw, he recognized, because he sees his own image in front of him. But he knows that I am Judas, and the one in front of me is Judas, appears like Judas. And he knew immediately what has happened. There's a transfiguration happened. And I'm done. I failed. I'm a I'm finished. Now that he recognized the transfiguration, because the transfiguration, by the way, happened once before that in the, not in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, before that, several months before that, and so they were watching, Isa were telling him, sit here and watch. He went up the hill, and the story says that two persons came. Somehow the disciples knows one of them is, is, uh, is Yona, and one of them, one of, uh, uh, one of them is uh, uh, Ilya, that's what I say, and one is Musa. Either they knew of the description or Isa told him after that. So it came from heaven, these two persons. And then they transfigured until their faces were radiating like the sun that they needed to shield their eyes. And then when they, the lighting went, open, they transfer, transfigurated back and Isa came down and told them that was Jail. So transfiguration happened once in history before that and this one without any purpose, has nothing to do with the context. So it is a model transfiguration to show them what will happen and may, may happen and it can happen. Obviously, Judas was present at that time and he saw that Elisha and he knew that this is the transfiguration. That's the reason it was presented. I am finished. I have lost. I have betrayed my master. And obviously, it's a state of shock, whatever going in his mind. You cannot imagine what's going in the mind, but he's definitely dumbstruck. So they put his hand on him, took him, and start going back. And most likely they didn't bother even following behind these runaway disciples who run from the back and jump over the, over the, 
wall separating to the next garden. They didn't bother even. All of them ran away. And they went back. And in violation of the usual established principle that the Sanhedrin, the upper court, would never meet at night, it's only at day. The chief priest was in a hurry that we have to get this business done quickly. This man is dangerous. So he called the Sanhedrin. Some people doubt that, say, this, this story cannot be trusted because the Sanhedrin never meets, uh, meets at, uh, at night. It's true, but there will be violation. And this is such a major issue for, for, the, for the leadership of the Jews at that time, a massive issue. Because this is not any, any, any irregular man. This is a very important personality for, about him, stories about the reviving the dead and so on going around. And they felt it deep in their heart, this is a messenger and this is dangerous. We have to dispatch with him as for, soon as we can. Either we believe him and follow, or we didn't want to do that, or we get rid of him. And that's what they decided. So the Sanhedrin met then, and the, especially in Matthew, the whole discussion on going with him and the, the chief priest asking him, did you say that, did you do that? And he's not saying, man, are you not going to defend yourself? Say nothing. What can he say? I am not a Teresa. He can't say that. Nobody will believe him. He was just getting angry with him, eating it himself, sad and overcome with sadness. <clears throat> then uh, allegedly took him to Pontius Pilatus. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. It's, there's a question mark. Uh, unlikely that the story that Pontius Pilatus washed his hand and so on. This most likely fabricated to exonerate the Romans and put all the blame on the Jews. This most likely a later fabrication. Because Pontius Pilatus was a very vicious and very dangerous man. And that story, I verified the dates and so on, against the common wisdom is that the crucifixion is most likely in the year 33. That's not true. It's in the year 27. They say either 27 or 29, 28, 29, because of the issues of the moon position and so on, and 33, 31. And the majority say it's 33 because of these and these, but that's all not true. I found out evidence that must be 27, but this is secondary. But this is only in beneficial because Pontius Pilatus was appointed their governor of that area in late 26, and he went there. And in the early time, he was extremely vicious and had confrontation with the Jews, as reported by Josephus. So it's unlikely that he will wash his hand and do something. Actually, the confrontation went to other level that they were all a danger of a mass execution, but then he stepped back. But he was at the peak of his power at the beginning. So it's very unlikely. In the year 33, he may have been weakened because he's a protege of a man who usurped the power in Rome. What's his name? Sorinus or something? Sorinus or something? So that the emperor Tiberius was actually in, in Napoli and barely having power. That one was the powerful one. But later on, this one was sacked in 30 and so on. And Pontius Pilatus may have become weak. So in the year 33, if that happened, we could understand because the man of the protege, the one who appointed him in Rome is, is removed and Tiberius is in full power, Emperor, Emperor Tiberius, maybe, but definitely the story in 27. So even no excuse for to believe that story. He was a vicious and as corrupt and vicious as you could imagine. So this washing hand is mostly fabricated. And also this, the discussion in John, in John there is where he had allegedly Isa, the, the, one, the detained one, let's say the imprisoned one, has a lengthy discussion about good and evil with, with Pontius Pilatus. <laughs> if you read the discussion about good and evil, you think you are in the, in the philosophical academy in Athens. <laughs> it's clearly fabricated. And even the Christian and the scholars you know this must be, this is what, what, the, what, the, what the writer of the gospel imagined it could have been a discussion. That's it. It's not possible. That is, in, in plain language, it's a fortune. It's a belief. It's kind of, there was no discussion. Maybe he was even not presented to Pontius Pilatus or just presented just this is the one we want you to crucify him. That's it. Because the crucifixion is a Roman punishment. It's not the Jewish one. And the crucifixion and an execution as a privilege of the governor. The Sanhedrin cannot execute anybody. Or only if according to Jewish law, this will be by stoning. So most likely Pontius has a role, but no more than this approving uh, signing of the execution. And that's it. And then uh, the whole story of the uh, flogging and so on. There was a movie which is horrifying in matter of blood and, and, and scourging, etc. Anyway, until on the cross. Now the description of the cross, all disciples were far away. They actually ran away. Nobody was present. That's very clear from Matthew. Second, the only women were there, allegedly Mary and so were there, but they were far away. They can't see from far away. 
all the reports is uh, definitely what it, what's been said and done there is most likely from people around the cross agenda. So we can't trust that that they reported that as well reported widely like Tawato and the people knew what's going on. What's going on was as clear is that was it definitely well established is the following that after some hours of, of the torture uh, punishment and so on, he screamed loudly very loud, extremely loudly. Salaha, salaha, adhima, he screamed enormously and said, or before screaming, said, and said, Ilahi, Ilahi, Lima Sabahtani, my, my God in, in Aramaic, my, that's the only place in Aramaic in the New Testament, everything is in Greek. And also there was inscription on top of the cross, which placed by the Romans as a mockery, which is, is, can, can be assumed to be correct because they, they put usually the cross, the, the main guilt of the one who was crucified for. Ilahi, Ilahi, my God, why are you forsaken? That's, it can't be his EJ is saying that. It must be with us. Be angry with himself, getting more angry, more angry, suffering pain, as an extreme pain, and so on, and anger and pain, and screaming loud. Why did you forsake me? Why did you let me fall down? So accusing, like, ultimately, like many, many sin are accusing Allah for their, for their failing. You have failed. You have failed. Allah did not forsake you. You forsake yourself. But anyway, that's not about a moment of uh, in that pain and so on. And screamed in such a, uh, a shot of pain and collapsed dead. And collapsed and it collapsed. Now, this is very, very medically and, and, uh, and psychologically very understandable. The extreme pain is self can kill, in addition to the regret and accumulated suffering over that one night or one, one, one and a half day. All of that peaking in the moment of desperation, screaming, and then possibly having a heart attack or, or some kind of a, of a nervous, uh, central nervous system induced self, self killing or something like that and collapse dead. Now the rest of the story that someone peer spear there, peer, uh, push the spear and check if he's dead or not and water and blood coming, this is more, could be and could be, it's not very relevant. Relevant is the screaming and the statement. That cannot be possibly coming from neither a prophet nor a divine being. It is impossible. And this is one of the places where they have struggled until now to explain what is the meaning of this, how this could have been. How could have uh, Isa being the son of God or a, or a, or a prophet or something else? That's, 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 that, that piece definitely cannot be denied as a very central part. So that's how Judas was dispatched. What happened to the body, the various stories there are not very persuasive. And there was a story of the garden and the burial by uh, John of Arithmetus or Arithmius or something is also not, not very persuasive. That's all not, not very, uh, and, that the, and that the woman came after three days to check and the place was empty. All of these seems to be fabricated because one story says three women came, one said two women, one said only one woman. It's, is not reliable, nothing that is really of any importance. And as I was taken after this transfiguration, he, he walked maybe to a place guided by the angel, maybe in a cave or in a room, or maybe in, near Gethsemane or in a house or something else, for three days hiding there, possibly in a cave. And then coming out. And that's what he announced also that they, you will see the sign of the Yona, so the Yunus. What's the sign of Eunice? Eunice was that they interpreted that Eunice was in the belly of the, of the whale for three days, three nights. The same would be him. And they interpreted that he would be in the grave for three days. But Yona was not dead inside the whale. Well, he was alive. Miraculously, the same way. He was not alive. He was not dead. So it cannot be fitting that he was three, three nights, three days in the grave. You said three nights and days in the grave cannot be fixed. Unless you shift the days. Because if it was on Friday afternoon, like the, the common narrative, then you have the night to Saturday and the night to Sunday. There's two nights and one full day. That's the day of Saturday. So it's not three nights and three days. Unless you refix things back and forth. So that's it. being in the grave is not the fulfillment of the sign of the illness. But being there. And then when he came out, slowly he, he went toward Galilee. And some disciples met him there and they didn't recognize him. Meaning the reversal of the transfiguration was very slow. Now in Galilee, after some time, he arrived and the, the narrative of the, of the New, New Testament does not seem to be objectionable. And after 50 days, he ascended, two angels came down in front of hundreds of people, took him and ascended with him in front of everyone. That's mentioned there. So go, go read, the, read the New Testament in this part. That's the day of ascension, which I think is, is not a public holiday in Britain. 
but it's public holiday in Germany and other places. That's 50 days after Easter. They call it the day of ascension. It's exactly 50 days or something like that after Easter. And the two angels took him from under the arm and ascended him to heaven. That's the ascension. So if, if we put the narrative this way, and obviously we have to verify all the other aspects and the points and, and dates and so on as, as a flanking operation, as, as making things more thorough. I, I started writing something that several years back, but I, I stopped because I needed to verify certain dates with the, to a level of certitude, which was not available at the time, but I think I have done them now. Uh, the, the writing is in English to start with, it's not in Arabic. So when, when I finish that, inshallah, I'll bring it out. But this is the summary. What happened in Gethsemane? The best possible theory is this one, that it is Judas, and this, that fits exactly with this Ilahi, Ilahi Rima Zabakhtani. The huge screaming and the collapse and then fits exactly with all the reasonable medical knowledge and, and uh, uh, circumstantial evidence and historic narrative. All other theories do not fit. And do not give a clear picture of what has happened. So I believe that's, I believe that's or roughly like that, is that what has happened. And Ibn Abbas has the theory that he had been taken into prison and then the angel came and took him from window to prison. But I don't, I don't think even that is acceptable because in the other ayah, in this place, you can't fit that in this ayah. But another place where Allah said, I will receive you to me. Independent of what the word receive means. Is it death? Is it sleep? Don't, we don't bother. But in the order is the, in the order of, of uh, relation to Allah rather than the order, historic order. Because say, I will receive to me, and I will lift you up. Obviously, lifting up is before the receiving, complete receiving. So I will receive you completely by lifting you up. And before that, I will purify you. I will purify from this believer. They will not touch you with, even with their filthy hands. So it cannot be possibly that they put their hand on him and got him in prison. And then in the prison, he was taken from the window. That's, uh, that's uh, one of the Ibn Abbas uh, uh, construction, uh, trying to understand what has happened. Which is good. It's a good attempt, no, no doubt. But he did not take consideration of the issue of mutahir from the kafir. He cannot even have been purified for disbeliever if they even put their filthy hand on him. There's no way they, they have succeeded for him. So that's what I said. They even when they rushed and get some money, the transfiguration happened and they put all they jumped on on the on the on the traitor who appears to be like Christ and took him. And then just they moved. And all what Isa needs to be is just to walk with them, maybe a few better or even in the, at the end of them, because they're not interested now. That they have they have that what they wanted. And he can't follow them or leave them or go home or go to meet the priest or whatever. Obviously, he went then into the place of his dedicated uh, seclusion until he appears again. And this all of this obviously has been missed from history because it couldn't be reported like that. Because what appears is that what appears is a apprehension ransacking the place, apprehending him, him in quote unquote, and taking him, trying, in, involving the Romans in, in, the, in the crucifixion order, because that's the, 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 uh, the accusation that he, is, he claims to be the king of the Jews and he is rebelling against the Romans, and the Romans will not, will not have any mercy once of rebelling against them. They don't care about the, the religion and Christ, could could care the less. Or whatever they care about the kingdom. Anyone declare himself a king of the of the Jews without being appointed king by by the emperor in Rome it cannot be accepted. He has to face the cross. That's exactly was how it happened. So that's this gives I think a, a reasonably good picture which fits with the Quranic narrative, but also most importantly with the historical narrative. So all of these crosses you see and the one crucified that over two thousand years and people think Jesus is not. This is Judas. <laughs> this is Judas. Someone was asking, they just bring that as a, as, a, as a joke or as a mockery. Someone is asking, how come that Allah has waited 500 years to tell us that Isa was not crucified? <laughs> Allah does nothing to tell you that. Huh? Why is Allah supposed to tell you that? Allah showed you the signs of Isa before and showing you clear that he appeared after that. Now, his appearance after that and the ascension, which has been, the appearance have been witnessed by hundreds of people. Paul claimed 500, he said, I do not see that myself, but the disciples and other people, and they counted 500 who were present that they saw him when he came and then he ascended. So that's, that's no issue. What happened in between, you have to use reason, your mental capability and, 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 and 
reason properly and analyze. Well, it's not obliged to, to give you every solution, analyze to give you how the universe works and so on. It doesn't work this way. But nevertheless, he stated in the Quran and give you just the headlines, the main points, which should, should be in it. But the people at that time should have concluded that, like these, these so-called uh, Gnostics who were concluded couldn't be possibly be crucified, is someone else. But Paul insisted that the only way you could conceive the whole, the whole, the whole story is that it is, uh, it is the Son of God or, or that some kind of a divine entity sacrificed for to, to relieve the people to random the people from the devil or to re, uh, to remove the initial sin. That's all. That's all. That's it. for him. The crucifixion is the core of the message. And then, then he said clearly, if Christ was not crucified and resurrected, then nothing has made, make any sense anymore then everything was have been in vain. And that word he used, everything has been in vain, meaning that many people are saying, no, no, he was not neither crucified nor resurrected. As I said there, he was in man hiding and was and read this up here. But this will undermine his theory of, of atonement and uh, ransoming from the devil, which he obviously is not, is not a Jewish theory, but most likely he was inf infested in his younger years by the, by the belief of the, uh, uh, of the pagans, which was widespread in the Roman Empire, they what they call it, Mithraism. Mithraism, the, uh, uh, the Mithraism around, uh, uh, revolves around that the Son of God appears in a form of a bull and was sacrificed to release the, relieve the world from the devil. So this, uh, he just removed the bull and put a human being and the Messiah, mixing the Messiah of the Jews with, with the pagan God and the, uh, and the answering from the evil force and the devil and so on turning monotheism into a dualism or, or, or a pagan, half pagan, half uh, monotheistic theory. And that's Paul. And the, since Paul is the one who won, won out and the Pauline direction is the one who became dominant and the, the one who wrote the scripture in Greek and the only thing written down in, uh, in Aramaic was the utterances of Christ, which was written by Matthew. It's not a gospel of Matthew, it's not that one, something else, but the German called Quelle, and this is lost. So the Pauline direction has dominated everything, and only such a literature uh, uh, was allowed to be canonized, and other literature was either hidden or destroyed, but still bits and pieces scattered here and there come up. Bits and pieces coming here and there. And various contradicting points of view. And like for example, we have a gospel called Gospel of Judas, claiming that Judas parted with Christ, the whole thing, and, uh, and, uh, and they were mocking uh, the people's belief about other things, but it's completely, uh, completely dualistic and agnostic, making a mockery about uh, the Old Testament and hinting that the Old Testament may be the revelation of the devil. That's exactly what Mark and the heretics said. So the early literature is completely confused, really, and they don't have any firm knowledge, but it doesn't appear that extremely confused because the canonical ones it's testing only this one direction, but even that has contradiction and confusion, even this canonical ones. But if you add the apocrypha and the hidden ones and the one who detected like the, the gospel of Thomas or the gospel of, of uh, Judas and so on, and other documents which have been found uh, uh, recently, last century, the century before last, the picture becomes even worse and more confusing and bewildering variations of ideas and so on. So that's, that's roughly, uh, I would say, from all the knowledge we have and all what we can have from the, uh, a bit from the apocrypha and from circumstantial evidence and various things, and specifically, most importantly, from the fact that you just disappeared from history and the two, uh, the two essential stories, let's say two, it's actually three narratives, but two of them can be fit together, the two in the, in the Acts of the, of the Apostles. And the one in the Gospel of Matthew, which is regarded by them as, as the Gospel number one, the most, the master Gospel. These two will never fit and cannot be harmonized. The only thing which comes to learn from both is that you just disappeared from history. That's it. What happened to him? We don't know. Completely, no trace from the master. Completely. And the best solution think, for that is that he's the one died in the cross. Someone calls him, maybe he went to India, maybe he went to China. Maybe, maybe that's, that's all possible. Because he disappeared, but he's not on record anywhere in the world after that. And the best fit is that. I think this is the best fit. Anyway, so this is the writing and going to the fine points and analyzing various aspects and so on. It has to be done, obviously, meticulously, but 
I think this is the best what we can offer for this uh, situation. With obviously the names and this, uh, correctly, because some of the names I did not pronounce probably and things like that, but that's it. I just clarify everything completely, make it clear like the daylight. And clarify even the mistakes that I about. Thought, thought when, when, like for the Abbas story that he was taken from the window and ascended to the heaven directly. But that's not fit to the narrative, which is, must be regarded as a really one of the most reliable pieces of history is that he reappeared, as they call the resurrection. Right. Fundamentally, without a resurrection, Christianity would not have existed as they claim, which is true. But it's not a resurrection. Is it a resurrection or reappearance? I say it's a reappearance. It's not a resurrection. He did not die or not get crucified. He reappeared and, and stayed with them sometime what and went to mean? Galilee and ascended from there. Right. This then everything fits correctly, and then we have really a consistent, right. reasonable theory by taking all these evidences and all these points. And even answering some minor points, if we fix the date properly, which I think is fixed now with certitude at the year 27. And the writing for that is also almost 100%. Uh, uh, clear and ready for several years, but I did not pursue the model for about five, six years now until I finished the issue of this calendar synchronization and get things to an exact level which I feel satisfactory. Okay, that's that's it. I think this is that's enough for the day. And uh, yeah, next I is also very interesting about the possible re, uh, reappearing of the uh, before Yom Kiyama, which has become very controversial recently. Also, so we have some meetings next week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, khair <laughs> inshallah.